iPad OS 16 is finally here, and along with it comes a whole host of new features and ways to use the iPad. And in this video, I'm going to go over the top 10 new things which I think you should know about. And some of these I have mentioned before in previous videos, but I've used them a lot more since then, and there's been some interesting updates to them too. So let's get right into it. Okay, let's start off with the real headline feature of iPadOS 16 and that stage manager, which is the iPad's answer to true windowed multitasking. This allows you to put apps into floating windows on the iPad in a very similar way you would do on Mac and PC. And the really exciting news here is that it's coming to older iPads too. Stage manager is now supported on iPad Pro 2018, 2020, and of course the new M1 powered versions, including the M1 iPad Air, which is awesome. However, there is a caveat for those older iPad models. Stage Manager is only going to work on the iPad itself and not when connected to an external monitor. And while that's a shame, and it kind of really is, it's better than the feature not being supported at all, like it wasn't a few months ago. During the iPadOS beta, so I've really enjoyed using Stage Manager. In fact, I actually made an entire desk setup around it, which I'll link up here if you want to see it. And I think that's worth checking out because it shows how good the iPad can be as a desktop setup, but it also kind of shows all the struggles that came along with it. And that particular release of the beta was extremely buggy, so it also shows some of that too. And that brings me to the second most important feature of iPadOS 16, it's the external monitor support. Sadly, this is currently missing in action, but it is coming back or it might already be back depending on when you're watching this video. Apple has noticed with some of the software betas, which I did extensively test, that Stage Manager isn't quite ready for a full release on those external monitors. So they're taking some more time of it. And that's a good thing. If you've already tried it in a previous beta, you'll know it's not the most stable thing out there right now. And in my testing, it was really buggy too. So I am happy Apple is taking longer with this feature because I want it to be awesome and I think it's gonna be a really cool feature when it finally ships in its full entirety. The external monitor support will only be on the M1 iPad Pro and Air models and the M1 powered iPads moving forward like the M2 Pro. Everyone else will get the classic black bars on either side mirroring experience that's been there for a good while. When Stage Manager does finally come out and it's in its complete release, I am going to make a proper review of it. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on that one. Next up, I wanted to talk about display scaling because if you are a fan of using Stage Manager on the iPad screen, then you're absolutely going to want to enable this on your iPad. This one is limited to the iPad Pro models from 2018 upwards and the M1 Air. And in a basic sense, it allows you to fit more on your screen. This comes into its own if you are using Stage Manager on your iPad because it just gives you a bit more breathing room and freedom to move around. I also like it because you can just see more on each app, especially ones that scroll like Twitter, Pinterest, and photos. This next one is a small one, but it's well worth knowing. In iPadOS 16, we're now getting a proper right-click feature. Gone is the small pop-up you used to get when double finger tapping over things like text. And in its place is a proper listed menu like you're used to on Mac OS or Windows. It's contextual too, so you'll get more options for other things like addresses and phone numbers. And it will even interact differently in different apps, much like you would expect it to, which is awesome. This sadly though only works when you have a mouse or trackpad connected. Otherwise you're back to the older menu, which is kind of strange as the new menu is loads better but this is well worth checking out in your favorite apps. Talking of system-wide updates, Spotlight also got a nice bump with iPadOS 16. I actually use Spotlight a huge amount on my iPad and iPhone, so I was really happy to see this update come in. If you haven't used it before, you can activate Spotlight by swiping down on the home screen or by pressing space and option at the same time if you have a keyboard connected. You can then type in anything to search across your system. I usually use this for opening apps that aren't on my home screen or that are buried away somewhere, but now there's way more contextual information and a huge amount more serious suggestions thrown in too. Some new features include searching for your photos by just entering what you're looking for. Like if you type in a cat, for example, it will show all of the photos with a cat in it. And you can even type in something like a desk and it will find those too. You can also trigger events within apps like setting a timer or getting into a focus mode just by typing it. There's loads more in here too. So just give it a go of your most used interactions on your iPad and see if it can speed up your workflow. 
Let's dive into some apps now. In Notes, there's been a few changes and some nice little updates, which I was really excited about. My favorite of these is the handwriting straightener. This will take your handwritten notes and literally straighten them out, making them neater and easier to understand for others. You can now also add text boxes to handwritten parts of your note too, rather than it being in its own separate section, which is something I've always disliked about Apple Notes. And if you insert an image, you can now finally rotate it too, which is good. There's also a bunch of new filters to organize your notes with smart folders too. So there's some really nice updates there in Notes. Talking of apps with big updates, the Files app has received a huge glow up and I did speak about this in the previous video I made on iPadOS 16, but to quickly go over it again because there's a fair few updates here. You can change file name and extension types into something different, which is really handy if you need to. If you right click or long press on a folder, you can get info and see how big it is, which is something that's been sorely missing. And there's loads more ways to navigate files with drop down menus and sorting options. There's also progress bars if you're copying one file from one place to another, which you can also stop mid copying, which is really useful. And I think the key takeaway here from the Files app is it's acting a lot more like Finder does on the Mac which is a hugely positive step in the right direction. Another new feature was collaboration, and this is a feature that allows you to invite others to work within Apple's apps in a very similar manner to Google Docs, if you've ever used that. A good example of this is within the Notes app, which is possibly the one we all use the most. You can invite someone to be part of that note and you can see them make changes in real time. This works in Numbers, Pages, Keynote and Safari at the moment, but hopefully we'll see it to come to some other apps soon too. This next one is going to fly totally under the radar for honestly most of us, but I think it's worth a mention here for sure. It's virtual memory swap with the M1 powered iPad Pros and the 256 gigabyte iPad Air. Virtual memory swap is a way of the iPad getting access to more RAM by using the storage on the iPad itself. And I don't wanna to get too technical with this one, but it basically means your iPad will be able to run more apps at the same time without having to close them and reopen them, which will speed up your iPad use. It's a neat feature, but you really have to be pushing your iPad to notice this one. Just when you think the updates can't get any more hidden or obscure than virtual memory swap, this next one, which is kind of in the same area, is called Driver Kit. Driver Kit is a way of the iPad interacting with hardware peripherals like a Mac or PC can. A good example would be sound cards, which allow you to have a true XLR microphone input support for things like podcasting. I actually think it will be more useful in the future when more pro level apps come out, which actually brings me to my next point. Slowly but surely, professional apps are finally coming to the iPad. Apple have recently announced DaVinci Resolve, which is a professional level video editor, is coming to the iPad, and it's all thanks to these updates in iPadOS 16. Hopefully, it also means it will pave the way for loads more professional apps to come to the iPad too. Let's hope we can see apps like Logic and Final Cut come to iPad, because a lot of us have been really screaming out for that, and I really think it's time for Apple to make that move. I'm not sure I know anyone personally that will make use of this next feature, but it's something the iPad feels like it was truly made for, and it's reference mode for checking colors on the iPad screen. Reference mode basically adjusts your iPad screen colors, so if you're doing color critical work like grading video footage or working on photography for print or for graphic design in general, this will give you a much better idea of how the colors will look in the real world. The idea being that if it looks good on this reference mode, it'll pretty much look good on whatever you put that content on. Now this is really limited, it only works on the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, making it a really niche feature, but I think people that want to use it will probably really love it as color correction screens are often really, really pricey. The only thing I will say about using this is there needs to be some sort of toggle for it or at least a way of triggering it through a shortcut because it's buried in the settings menu, making it a pain to turn on and off. I think if you could toggle it quickly to see how your colors are looking, that might be really awesome. Just a little switch, you could go on off, on off. But right now it's a little tricky to remember to even use. Okay, so that rounds up all of the newer features in iPadOS 16, which I think are worth knowing about, or at least the ones that I'm pretty excited to start using. Let us know in the comments below if you think I've missed out any ones or if there's any other little features which you're really excited for. And of course, like usual, I will see you all in the next one.